Hello, everyone. Tis I, Jonathan John von Jonathan III, and I am here to tell the tale of a spy movie. A spy movie unlike any other. I myself am a spy. I spy on people who are evil. I spy on people who have done terrible things. And I also spy on people in the shower. And this movie in particular has to do with a very specific skill that has to do with being a spy. The skill of disguising yourself as another. Like me. Disguising myself as a toilet in the bathroom while you take a shower. So let us you and I go together and find out who truly is the master of disguise. Oh, who the fuck are you? Oh, oh. Yes, yes, 911, there's a random guy in my house. Well, it looks like it's time to go. I don't know what to do. Oh, God. Where'd he go? What? Uh. So. So anyway, today we'll be talking about the wonderful abomination of a film that is called The Master of Disguise. And when I was a little boy, I do remember the times that I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. I thought it was the funniest shit in the world. Similar to that of Cat in the Hat. Similar to that of Austin Powers. You know, movies of that slapstick comedy style. And so far, every movie review that I've done just kind of shows how foolish of a child I was. Because this movie's bad. Very, very bad. But at the same time, I'm pretty sure it was meant to be terrible. Just how scary movie one through however many they do. It's meant to be bad. It's meant to be stupid. And just like how Cat in the Hat was with Mike Myers, this entire movie is just a skit show for Dana Carvey. And I'll admit there's a few decent moments, but I think the reason it's funny is just because it's extremely unfunny. So it makes it funny. But yes, the majority of this movie is just unfunny distasteful and creepy. So let's watch. So the movie starts out with a woman running away from a bunch of dudes. Oh God, she's gonna fall. Oh, I guess she can fly. That was close. But she ends up getting away and oh my God. Well, that was interesting. So this person right here is Fabrizio, who is the dad of the main character of the film. And the driver of the vehicle tells Fabrizio. Fabrizio, it's a time your son is told of his destiny. This is a no life. For my son, I will never tell him of his true destiny. 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 You know what? <laughs> you know what? Just from that one line, just from that one echo, I've seen it. I've seen enough. That performance on top of that poor quality echo, I just don't think I want. Nay. I don't need to go any further. Now we move on to present day America where we meet Dana Carvey's character, Pistachio. Yes, that is his real name. Pistachio, I hope you're not making faces in the mirror with the underwear on the head. Uh, unless, of course, I had a shaving cream beard to go along with it. Oh, yes. Underwear on the head. Such a highbrow joke. I honestly couldn't understand it. I don't get it. it. It's just too high caliber for my small brain to understand. From the very beginning, he had impulses he could not control. You slap me, I slap you! Now that's funny. <laughs> hey, it's sweet life as Zack and Cody as a kid. Naturally, Pistachio wanted to find a girl just like Mama. Just like his mama, right? You know, maybe her personality, her charm, her maturity, something like that. You know, that's what he's talking about, right? This movie isn't going to devolve into some weird incestual type uh, joke, would they? No. Something about her reminds me of my mama. Oh! So he wasn't talking about his mom's personality. He was talking about her ass. Great! This is great! Excuse me, young man. I, I couldn't help but notice that you became acquainted with the sidewalk a moment ago. So I would just like to mention this now. Uh, Dana Carvey's character is Italian, and um, 
I don't know if he's doing this on purpose, but that is by far the worst Italian accent I've ever heard in my life. It's literally the equivalent of Baba Booey, hey, 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 spaghetti, do for you now a scene from the hit motion picture Shrek. You ready? Okay. Why don't you get away from me, donkey? What you talk about get away from you? I'm making waffles. Hey. Oh, what a cute little puppy. <laughs> oh, I see you like my dog. Yes. Like what Italian man just randomly, and even that, she just out of nowhere. Do Italians do that? Anyone out there who is Italian, can you comment below? Do you just randomly shout out, and even that, she just for no fucking reason? Sorry, sorry, I got a little bit heated there, didn't I? So then random bully character trips Pistachio over, and somehow the Biscetti just perfectly lands on each customer's head. So Pistachio has this weird tick. I guess it has to do with him being a master of disguise and something about voices in his head. And then he just mocks anyone. It's just like a Tourette syndrome, basically. He can't really control it and, and it's never funny. Am I going too fast for you? Huh? Are you mocking my husband? Are you mocking my husband? Because you better not be. Because you better not be. So then Pistachio does the whole generic, maybe I have a bigger destiny. Maybe my life isn't just in a restaurant. And then his dad's like, no, no, stay here. So basically every uh, parent-child relationship, or at least the ones I've dealt with, you know where the kid's like, I want to do something great with my life. I want to do something amazing. And then the parent's like, no, you're going to business school. You're going to be a manager at a fast food establishment for the rest of your life, and you're going to like it. Too personal. Excuse the waiter, Rex. What are you doing with your arm around the cake? And the touche queen? What are you doing out here with the oversized Rex? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2000s. This happens a lot in these movies. You know, there's a lot of weird sexism stuff, and it gets pretty bad in this movie, where he refers to the girl as Cake and Tush Queen. <laughs> but anyway, Tush Queen is making out with the bully Rex, and, and he gets really sad about it. But then Pistachio's parents get kidnapped. Who the Oh, my little cannoli, you make my pistachio very happy. Oh, oh. And for some goddamn reason, Pistachio is just on the roof. Why was he on the roof? Like, like what? <laughs> it would make more sense if he was just like peeking around the corner and saw his, his dad getting kidnapped, but he's just on the roof looking down upon them. What? What is he doing up there? The only funny parts in here are accidental. Pistachio calls the cops and then puts a cannoli on the line. My name is Pistachio, and oh, Mama's cannoli is here. Don't call again. I'm really starting to understand why child me enjoyed this because, oh boy, that is, oh boy. Oh boy! So an old man gets dropped off creepily in the middle of the night, and I could only assume this is a reference to another movie. I just have a very strong inkling this is a reference to something, but I don't know what it is. Can I help you? I came to help you, Pistachio. My father, your son. Holy cannoli, you are my sister! You don't have a sister! Uh, it's his sister. Get it? Because it's not his sister. So saying that it is his sister makes that part funny. I, I want to go back and just punch my child self in the face for liking this. So then Pistachio's grandpa shows a little bit of a the master of disguise uh, 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 powers going on here. And he turns into a maid. We have a clue. I'm sorry. I'm looking for my grandfather. Grandfather, not here. I'm sorry. It's me, you idiot. Latex robber. Yes, it's so soft, and the place is so incredibly clean. Okay, so let's break this down a little bit here, all right? For a millisecond, he disappears, turns into a maid with a costume that he just pulled out of his ass, clean the entire house within that five seconds of being gone. So, uh, yeah. Nothing makes sense in this movie. So then his grandfather runs down the history of being a disguisee. 
They were among the world's first environmentalists. Sorry, George Washington, no cherry tree for you. What if he just cuts another tree? Think about it. Like, what if he just picks up his axe and walks to a different tree and cuts it? I'm just saying, what's the point of even having that scene? Sam Lincoln was such a boring speaker that the disguises had to help him get elected president. <laughs> yeah! Let's party! Hit it, boys! <laughs> not crazy frog not crazy frog so so for this movie to fill in the plot hole of you know why doesn't grandpa just go do it you know he's got the skills why doesn't he just go save him they bring out the disguise which is a big book of rules for you know people like them and apparently every rule is a big pop out thing that has this extremely specific rule that just pertains to what they're talking about if a father and mother are missing only a son who has become a master of disguise can save them without any direct help from the grandfather. I mean, a simple doorknob would have worked or like a simple book thing that you pull out and the door flies to the side. What is this giant contraption? He has to set everything back up every time he leaves the room. So then they go through a training montage and I, let me tell you, after Zoom, I, I, I can't, I can't do montages. Just montages in movies in general, I can't handle anymore. Especially a montage like this. They actually made a specific song for this movie like a song called master of disguise they made it for this movie it's like a hip-hop jam it's it's so stupid i cannot believe they actually made a song for this <laughs> okay after that painful montage we figure out the bad guy was the guy in the beginning that uh, Fabricio was running from. All right, so the first strike of a little bit of misogyny in this movie, so he kidnapped the parents, right? So the dad is the only one in captivity, but the mom, you wanna know where the mom's at? Can you guess where the mom's at? In the fucking kitchen. The mom is in the kitchen for the entirety of the movie. Not exaggerating, she is only in a kitchen the entire time making food. Oh, 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 my goodness. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, okay, stop. Whoa, oh, there's a fire on the stove. Oh, better chop these vegetables a little bit quicker now. So he basically uses his wife as leverage so he can force him to be the master of disguise in order to steal expensive things, basically. Oh, and uh, uh, I forgot to mention a minute little detail. Uh, this bad guy's quirk, if you want to call it that, is uh, every time he laughs, he farts. <laughs> Poopy, he farted. <laughs> okay, but honestly, I'm gonna level with you guys right here. Uh, him farting is actually funny. Like, I, I know, I know, what, what, farty, poopy, stinky? You think farty, poopy, stinky's funny? Yes, damn it, okay? It's not the fart, per se, okay? It, it's it's the aftermath of the fart. They let it linger. You know, normally it's just farts, farts, haha. But it's the fact that in this movie, every time he farts, there's like a good old 10 seconds of awkward silence afterwards. That's what's funny. The fart, eh, uh, but the aftermath, it's funny. I don't care what anyone says, okay? Fart poopy can be funny sometimes. <laughs> Now, all I have to do is disguise my voice, right? <laughs> uh, open the sesame! Open the sesame! Ooh, yep. Yep. Yep, that hit. That hit pretty hard. Oh, boy, the 2000s were a different time.
I'll tell you that much. I mean, isn't that the equivalent of dressing up as an Asian person and just saying ching chong bing bong over and over? Not only is that just extremely unfunny, but it's just in bad taste in every way. So then the grandpa tells Pistachio of a secret power that all masters of disguises have called Energico. Energico. You will become another person. You must repeat the mantra. Become another person. They just didn't care. They, I'm, I'm convinced they did not give a flying fuck about this movie. Really? Become another person. Become another person. This is just Dana Carvey wanting to do impersonations and wanting to make a movie at the same time. They're like, yeah, fuck it. Just, just smash it all together and hopefully we'll come up with something. Become another person. Become another person. Who are you now? The question is not who I am, the question is who are you? I know who I am. I am Prince Lalejama from the Ringy Dingy Heights near Bombay, Calcutta and New Delhi, India, 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 India. Okay. How is that impersonation any any better than the first one? That what? <laughs> he literally just repeated India like five times. I, Oh my god. I'm just gonna call it as I seize it. Um is he doing blackface? Like I, I know it's not black, okay? I, I technically it's not black, but you know, there's it's just like a, a thing there that you know people aren't really fond of when people who are of a white color uh putting dark color all over their face, but <laughs> that is a big reptile. <laughs> Not a problem. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna end it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna step outside. I'm gonna walk in front of a car. I'm just gonna step right in front of the car. And when the car slams on the brakes and almost narrowly hits me, I'm gonna scream at him to just floor it. Don't be a pussy, alright? Don't be a pussy! Floor it! I don't want to be here anymore. And now we get to learn of the fighting style of uh, disguises, which is just smacking people in the face. That's basically it. You put your hands up like this and you block and then you smack and you smack, smack. Okay, I will admit there's one part of the film that is good, I think. Especially for a movie like this where it's kind of self-aware slapstick comedy. So Pistachio's dad, Fabrizio, who's kidnapped, basically his method of stealing things is he just walks up as celebrities and just takes things. <laughs> like he walks up as Michael Johnson and just, they just give him the U.S. Constitution. <laughs> like that, that's, that's it. That's all he had to do. Oh yeah, and then the, the bad guy farts again. <laughs> oh, she could be a good wife for you. Ha! <laughs> Get it? Because it's not a female. It was a guy's butt. Moving on. Now Pistachio's trying to get an assistant because apparently uh, Masters of Disguise need an assistant, which why the only reason I could think is they just wanted a hot girl in this movie. And this part is also extremely misogynistic because how they hire the woman is based on their ass size and how attractive they are. I get it's supposed to be comedy, it's supposed to be funny, but the thing about comedy when it's offensive in a way is it needs to be funny like if, if anything ever is offensive and comedy it has to be funny or it's just a no-go and this just isn't funny it's just hiring a girl for her ass that's about it oh how convenient a random attractive lady walks up at the perfect moment they're looking for someone Okay, so somehow it gets even worse because the first question of the day they ask her 
is her size, is her size for her uniform. And that pertains to, you know, breast size, stomach size, and waist size. And you wanna know what happens when she tells them her waist size? Is 35, 24, 34? <laughs> you said 34? <laughs> A little bottom. <laughs> They laugh at her. They laugh at her because her ass is too small. Oh boy. Oh boy. What a year, dude. What a year for film. Like how fucking demeaning and disrespectful is that? That's not even a joke. There's nothing funny there. There is no joke. They're just being assholes because I guess the joke in the film is that Pistachio wants a mom-sized ass. It's so goddamn stupid. Me like it. Me like it too, but this cat's got no mama caboose. <laughs> Un po magre de culo, eh? Ti dispiace? Yeah, yeah. Capisco. Eh? Le un culo e piccolo. <laughs> Ma uh, anche un certo... Oh God, this is, it's, uh, it's so hard to watch. Is it weird that it's like really hard? Is it just me? Is it just me? But this scene is just extremely hard to watch. So now the grandfather takes off because apparently I guess uh, telling Pistachio uh, the mantra of be another person and also teaching him how to slap things is as much knowledge as he's got. So his grandpa gives him a ball and a suitcase and then drives off. So Pistachio's assistant found a cigar in the dumpster where his dad got taken and apparently it had to do with a club called the Turtle Club. So this next scene, let me give you a little bit of a precursor. So when I was a child, I thought this scene was so goddamn funny, I rewound it and laughed at it many times. Like many times. So I'm gonna take a leap of faith and believe in my child self and think that this next part it's gonna be goddamn funny. If I thought it was so funny that I rewound it many times when I was a child, this has to be funny now, okay? I was not that stupid as a child. This is gonna be funny, damn it. It's gonna be funny. He's fine. He's fine, Turtle. Turtle. Um. <laughs> Why was I so dumb as a child? <laughs> what even is this? <laughs> Why? Where'd he go? Huh? <laughs> Eat a man's nose and then spit it back onto his face? God. God, if you're real, you son of a bitch, you better, you better smite someone today. I swear to God. Burn every copy of this movie. Burn it to the ground! God? <laughs> he's, not, he's not coming, is he? He's not coming, is he? So moving on from that atrocity, uh, Fabrizio dresses up as Jesse Ventura and just yoinks the Liberty Bell. Thanks for the Liberty Bell, guys. I'll bring it right back. Oh yeah, and bad guy farts again. <laughs> so then we get to meet Jennifer's asshole of a boyfriend who is just a dick. Like that's just all his personality is. He's just an asshole all the time. I'm okay, I'm okay. What a loser. You are trying to horn in on my action, aren't you? <laughs> Just that phrase, you're trying to horn in on my action. I'm going to start using that in real life. I don't know what situation I can get myself in to use that, but I'll find a goddamn way. And for some weird reason, um, Pistachio's nose is bleeding. I don't know if they meant to have this in here because nothing happened to him. He didn't get hit. Uh, he didn't fall down. Yeah, I don't know if he was just had a nosebleed and they just left it in there, or maybe they cut out a scene where he got punched. I don't know. 
It's just kind of confusing why his nose is bleeding and it's not explained. So then they randomly find the bad guy on a site called Classmates and it literally just says his evil plan on there to become the world's greatest black marketeer and possess the rarest treasures on earth then store them in a secret underground lair. See, there, see there's a couple like funny self-aware things here and there in the movie, but I kind of consider this just freaking lazy writing. They didn't want to write, you know, them figuring out his plans. They just fucking pasted it on a goddamn site and then it's like oh they found it so then we get to move on to the next awful character that dana carvey plays uh which is just grandma sexually frustrated grandma that's that's all it is you're a tall drink of water and i just love moisture what? allow me to introduce myself my name is gammy gammy num num Literally all the movie is, is his assistant doing everything and then him putting on a disguise and attempting to be funny. That's the whole movie. But where is the ladies who Aw. Aw? What's awe about going to the bathroom? That's like someone going up to, hey bro, I gotta take a shit. Where's the little boys room? Aw, yo, taking your little poopy whoopsies. <laughs> Why? And then we get a Dana Carvey impersonation of Scarface. And it's bad. Someone say hello to my little friend. Don't touch. See that, my friend? That is a rare shrunken head right there. idiot is ruining my party bring him to me okay how is dancing at a party ruining your party i, I, I don't know i feel like that'd make your party better and then he turns into um cow shit oh man i just stepped on a cow pie uh, forget about it all right i told you he wasn't here let's go back which why why not a tree why not a cow? Oh, how can I forget? Because poopy. Because poop. I told you, there he is. He's the master of disguise. Oh, yeah. Did I mention there's two songs? They made two songs for Master of Disguise. Two original, decent sounding. Like, they're not bad. They're good songs. And they made it for this movie. And then we get another character, which is just Scottish guy with big teeth. Uh, I, is he supposed to, I don't know. Maybe this is referencing a specific character, but I, I it's a Scottish guy with big teeth, I guess. I don't know. She owes a substantial amount of back taxes for her time as an exchange student at the University of Heidelstrudel. <laughs> And then he plays British uh, spy guy with a cane. I, I, again, I don't know if he's referencing a different character. Maybe I would find it more enjoyable if I knew if he was referencing a different character. But to me, all the characters are bad, except poop, because poop is funny. Well, a sharp blow to the Dewey Gumball would get the festivities started. And finally, a smack to the Digi Dodge. Did someone yell Timber? And then we get a little bit of a love Square, a uh, little uh, tush cake or uh, tush something, tush queen, I think that's what he called her. Uh, she is now messing with uh, Jennifer's boyfriend, and then her boyfriend and Pistachio get in a fight, and then it's supposed to be like some sort of character development, like all of a sudden he just knows how to fight. Uh, who's a your daddy? Hey, Trent. Go down the middle. Like, don't don't swing around because of blood. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't, none of it makes sense. Punch him in the face. I want him, I want you to punch him in the face, damn it. And then the original girl that Pistachio liked because of her butt goes up and hugs him and gets all lovey-dovey and he's like, nah, girl, I got Jennifer now. And all while can't touch this is playing in the background. And on top of all of that, the bully from the beginning, he shoves him like, like he shoved him in the beginning. It's all coming together. 
It's all, it's a perfect storm. He did it. He did, round of applause for Pistachio. I, I, I can't handle it. I, I think I'm gonna have a heart attack. And then Jessica Simpson steals the Apollo Lunar module. <laughs> and then once again, the bad guy farts. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay. I guess they're moving on from... God damn it! And now, all of a sudden, she just falls for pistachio like there is loads of character development happening i mean in the last scene four or five instances of character development happened in one second like in one scene and now all of a sudden she's falling for him i all right ball that his grandfather gave him in the beginning he said use when you're in a dire situation he's not in a dire situation uh everything's actually going pretty well for him right now but uh he uses it and says that he really needs help and he's out of ideas so his grandfather pops out in a bubble which is like why is his grandfather not just there and then uh the little boy comes up who is jennifer's son and says that jennifer was kidnapped and then the little boy whispers an idea of a disguise into pistachio's ear and then the grandpa bubble just pops away what was the point of even getting the goddamn Grant bubble? So then the bad guy says he's going to glue a plaster of himself over Fabrizio and then push him off a cliff so it looks like he's dead so he gets away with everything. But Pistachio overheard it because he was disguised as a giant cherry pie. And then Pistachio uh, shoots cherries at the bad guys and then they all die from cherries. Okay. So then Pistachio gets caught and has to fight like 50 ninja, which is just ridiculous. And I, I kind of like this. So then after the bad guy's plans have been mostly foiled, he shows them that he put his head on Fabrizio's head. And now he, Fabrizio's a bad guy because I guess when you wear a disguise as a disguisey, you are like forced to act like that person oh yeah and uh the bad guy farts <laughs> so um pistachio's dad is now a, a bad guy because of the energy go right um you want to know how pistachio convinces his dad to turn back pulls his underwear out of his ass and puts it on his head because when he was a child and now as an adult, he wears underwear on his head occasionally. And that, that, ladies and gentlemen, is how he turns back to normal. Yeah, and another thing, um, he doesn't, you know, take off the mask. He just transforms back into Fabrizio, which, wh when was that a thing? I thought, th I thought the Master of Disguise wore stuff you know that they, they didn't transform it wasn't a metamorphosis okay they just put on a costume and that's ladies and gentlemen the master of disguise there you have it ladies and gentlemen the master of disguise one of the greatest most bestest awesomest movie of all times if you so happen to have enjoyed this video i have not I hated every second of it, but if you enjoyed this video, please, for the love of God, subscribe. Please like the video, please comment, and do all that special stuff. I'm, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna just go off. Go off into the world. Become another man, potentially. I'm going to become the master of disguise. Oh god. Oh god, that hurt my back. Oh god. Oh god, that hurt my back. Okay. That was a bad idea. Oh, that was a bad idea. Oh god. Now before all of you leave and go to your subreddits and your uh, Twitters and Instagrams and shit like that, why don't you do a little something called listening to tunes or maybe to some podcasts or maybe you should be listening to them on some Raycon earbuds. That's right. Today's sponsor is once again Raycon. 
we're back. Now, if you're subscribed to me, obviously you've heard this ad before. If you are new, listen, because these earbuds are extremely good quality. I've had them for probably over a year, I think, and they have not led me astray in any way and they are really good. They start about half the price as any premium wireless earbuds you could find. And coming from my many years of production experience and music experience and listening to a bunch of audio earbuds, these things are top quality and they sound amazing. You can use it while you're working on your homework. You can use it while you're taking a jog. You can use it while you're taking a shit. And this model right here, the Everyday E25, is the best they got yet. They got six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth, no delay. You don't have to worry about that. At a nice compact design, it's got some nice thump, nice bass to it. And if you want to be quirky and stuff, you can get it in different colors. So oh, down to the business, down to the deal. 15% off, get yourself these earbuds with the code bionic pig, link in the description, byraycon.com slash bionic pig. Go there right now, get the 15% off and get yourself some of these bad boys. Thank you, I appreciate you, mwah. Bye, bye, go, leave, get out, get off, get away from my channel. Do I, but subscribe first. Please subscribe first.